welcome back to my channel. Today I am filming my January 2020 haul video. So this is my first haul video for the year. Now, if you guys haven't seen my video, I am on a low buy, no buy for the months of January and February. Technically, I wanna extend this out to the whole year, but I know myself pretty well and so I decided to take it every two months at a time just so I could reevaluate. For example, I know the Sephora sale is coming in April usually, and so maybe if I need to re up on something or I need to tweak my rules a little bit, making it a every two month kind of deal makes it a little bit more manageable for me. So basically, for my low buy the low buy aspect is for eyeshadow palettes i have four palettes that i can purchase each month and basically i just decided that would be one palette of a week or say for example if there's like a bundle or something like the juvia's place bundle if i purchase the bundle or if i purchase like four palettes at a time then i'm not able to purchase any more palettes for the month so we'll see how that goes but I have to say I feel like I kind of failed this month I've definitely reduced what I bought or what I've bought this month compared to probably January 2019 but I know I still did cheat and I definitely did buy some things that I kind of told myself I wasn't gonna buy so if you're gonna lecture me you can I deserve it um, I still think it was a success though because I stuck to my palettes for the most part. Yeah, it's been a hot mess. I think I need to tweak the palette rule too. The first thing I should say is I'm not a low buy, no buy expert. So any helpful tips you guys have on how to tackle things like new brands I want to try? Because I know like Amy, she had allocation last year where she could try one new brand a month, which I haven't factored into my no buy low buy so there are some things that i still need tweaking i'm going to show you everything i bought and then if people get mad at me people get mad at me but all i can do is try to be a better person each day and reduce what i buy so let me start with something i wasn't supposed to buy i wasn't supposed to buy any foundation this month or the next two months because i have a lot of foundation but I think if you watch my videos, you know I am a huge fan of Milani. They're one of my favorite drugstore brands and they haven't done a foundation in a while. They did a stick foundation last year and when I saw the claims for this foundation, I was oh so curious. So I did pick up the Screen Queen Natural Finish Foundation in the shade 400, which is Toasted Chai and then 410, which is Warm Tawny. So I do have both of these. I think these are pretty decent color matches for me. I wasn't quite sure which shade, so I just picked up two because I wanted free shipping, which is cringy, but I really like this foundation so far. I'm not, you know, gonna say you need to run out and buy it, but I like it so far, so I feel like I'm gonna get some good use out of this in 2020. I do wanna stay away from foundations, buying more foundations. But like I said, I really like Milani, so I want to test that out for my channel as well. And then um, again, to hit free shipping, I picked up this blush, which is Milani Coralina. And I feel like this is the tan girl version of Luminoso because everyone loves Luminoso, but Luminoso is a little too light for me. So I didn't even realize they had such a bright peachy shade for blush. And again, I'm not supposed to be buying blush this low buy either but i figured a nice bright blush i love blushes and i will be decluttering my blushes here shortly so i know i like that formula because i have the shade berry amore which is probably one of my all-time favorite blushes so i did pick up another blush and i feel bad because you know i shouldn't be doing that and i recognize that so i'm gonna be stronger in February but yeah I just want to be honest with you guys because if we can't be honest with each other then what's the point like you know what I mean like ooh. <laughs> 
I do feel bad because a lot of you left comments on my low buy announcement video saying you can do it you can do it and so i do feel bad because i feel like i'm letting you guys down i'd rather be honest about it than not show you everything i bought so hopefully you guys understand anyway the next thing i bought is another product that was unplanned and again this is another thing where i need to figure out like if it's on sale and if it's on my list of brands I want to try, is it okay to buy it? Is it okay to go over my palette allocation? Because it wasn't even on my radar, but my friend Amanda, Makeup Just For Fun, has been raving about this palette. This is the Remedy palette by Beauty by Stoney. And she featured this in one of her videos, like her favorite eyeshadow palettes of 2019. So I always take recommendations from like Angie and Amy. Those are my go-to people when it comes to recommendations and so it was really fun for me to try something from a different youtuber actually that's not true i also like watch Teresa, annette like there's so many other youtubers but majority of my collection i would say me and angie and amy have like the same kind of palettes so when i heard Amanda talked about a brand I'd never tried before. I was really excited and I had been researching this brand since last year because she had mentioned it in other videos as well and I saw it was a black home brand and it's a $20 palette but her shipping was like eight bucks and if you guys know me I hate paying for shipping so on Martin Luther King Day um, they were having a 20% off sale and I decided to pick it up so that I could compensate a little bit for the shipping that I had to pay. So a little bit about this brand, it is a black owned makeup brand and she's got a really interesting story. There's an about us page on the website and I think if I remember correctly, she used to be in the military, um, she was a medic and then she just felt like she wanted to explore makeup I believe. So she has this brand and I think Amanda said she's met the owner and yeah, I just thought it was really interesting. This is made in China. It is paraben free, cruelty free, and vegan. Has a 12 month shelf life. So I will be testing this out. And I did add this brand to brands I want to try in 2020. And very excited to try something from a woman owned business, of course. So yeah, very, very cool. And again, I'm sorry. I know. I broke my own rules, but I was able to pick it up on sale and it is a brand I want to try this year. So. This wasn't, I didn't break a rule buying this because brushes aren't on my no buy list. This is something I was really curious about because I do get some things from Alter Ego for PR, but not everything. So when I saw that they did brushes, I was really excited. You get all of these brushes in a set for like 30 bucks and you guys know I love affordable brushes. These look really well made. They are made in China. They could potentially be like Morphe like quality. I don't know but I love this packaging. If you guys buy I believe Wayne Goss brushes come in packaging like this so I'm just really excited to try Alter Ego brushes because I've had really good luck with their eyeshadow palettes so I should probably come up with a rule for brushes it's not even a category that really crossed my mind but I was really happy to get some affordable brushes and also I needed to pick up another brush because I wanted to use Afterpay so I grabbed an extra brush and then they also did liquid lipsticks and I wasn't sent those in PR either so I decided to just grab one shade this is the shade Intrigue and it's like a beautiful nudie brown color you guys know I love shades like this. Again, I broke my low buy, no buy rules because I'm not supposed to be buying lip products in 2020, but I'm curious to try this lip formula because I like this brand and I do have a code with them. It's Karen10 for 10% off your purchase. So if you guys want to try anything from them and I'm excited to try out those brushes to be very honest with you guys. So if that makes somebody mad, I guess it's warranted because I shouldn't have been buying some makeup brushes, but anyway. <laughs> okay, the next thing I bought, again, broke my foundation rules, but I was so curious about this because I used to really enjoy the matte version of this foundation, so Wet n Wild came out with the Photo Focus foundation in Dewy Luminous, 
And I wasn't sure what shade, so I picked up Caramel and I picked up Amber Beige. I think I'm gonna be more Caramel, so I will definitely do some kind of wear test review situation with those two. And again, I think, I think Wet n Wild was doing free shipping, so to hit free shipping, I also grabbed a High Shine Mega Last High Shine Brilliance Lippy in the shade Mad for Mauve. I typically really like the Wet n Wild lip products, so I'm excited for this product. Oh, it's like sealed. Holy crap. Okay. So here is the shade I got. I'm hoping it's just like a bomb type product. I'm so into bombs right now. I blame Amy because she's like also obsessed with like lip bombs. So I feel like her obsession has now been passed on to me. And yeah, that's really cute. I also went to Walmart, which, you know, that's never a good thing. I don't buy a ton of drugstore stuff, but I did see some new things that I'd never tried before, so I did decide to pick some stuff up. I picked up the 16-hour camo concealer from e.l.f. because I've been on the hunt for a new concealer. I actually didn't really like this concealer. This is in the shade Deep Olive. It's a little too dark for me, so I think I'm actually going to take that back. And then my mom has the Tinted Lip Oil from e.l.f., which again, like I said, Amy's really gotten me into bombs. And so I picked this one up, just wanting to try it. Didn't really like it in the shade Nude Kiss. I wish they had a different shade, so I'm gonna have to declutter that. And then I love my drugstore mascaras. So when I saw Maybelline had a new mascara, which I hadn't tried, I picked this up. This is the Falsies Lash Lift by Maybelline. It's okay, it's not very good. Um, it's okay. It gets the job done. I used to be such a drugstore mascara girl and I've somehow stocked up on a bunch of high-end mascara and now I'm spoiled because I love my Monsieur Big, my Giga Black mascara. Those are like two of my go-to's. So this one just feels anticlimactic right now, but I think it looks really cool. Like look at this sleek packaging. Like that's pretty awesome. And then the gem I discovered from the drugstore this month is the lip color I have on today. This is from Physicians Formula, and I thought it might be a dupe to the fresh lip balm that I really like. This is Organic Wear Tinted Lip Treatment with Butter Blend. This is new from them in the shade Bury Me, and I really like this. It's very much a balm. Like I said, Amy's gotten me hooked on lip balms and light formulas, so very, very pumped that I have that product. Okay, so the next thing I bought that I shouldn't have bought, but I felt like this was definitely a need. So I have the Soft Matte Complete Conceal by NARS. This was in a project pan, blah, blah, blah. It ended up in a declutter because I basically made a huge dent in it and I feel like it's so old. So I was about to throw this away and I've just been struggling with my under eyes recently. I feel like the drugstore concealers I've tried recently, like the e.l.f. one, the Juvia's Place one, haven't been giving me the coverage I need for my dark circles under my eyes, and I definitely feel like it's something I am insecure about. I'm not insecure about a lot of things, but just looking tired on camera is tough. So I wanted to repurchase, and I did yesterday. I went into store and picked up the shade Caramel, which is medium dark too. This is medium too, this is medium dark too. I think this is a better match. I always felt like this one was too light for me, so I'm glad I have a new shade and I'm not gonna buy any concealers after this. I just needed to pick this one up because I just wanted to feel good about my under eyes again. And I use this today in this makeup look, so you guys will see that in my bite wear test video so just keep an eye out for that but I really like this concealer. I have dry skin and dark circles and this one with a nice concealer brush it just blends beautifully and it's lightweight and it's very creamy so I really like how it wears on my under eyes. Okay so I did mention bite so Here's where I didn't fail at life, and I actually went in and got a sample. This is that new Bite Foundation. I was curious about it because 
um, like all the big YouTubers that are so good at no makeup makeup looks, have been raving about this. So this is Bites Foundation in the shade T120. I'm actually wearing it today. It's a little too orange for me, I think. It's growing on me, but when I first put it on, I was like, oof, this is the wrong color. So if I ever were to purchase the full size, I would get it in a couple of shades lighter, but so far I really like it. And I will have a wear test video coming up so you guys can stay tuned for that. Okay, so the next one is a little Shop Missé purchase and I didn't break any rules with this purchase, but now that I have bought what I've bought, I'm pretty sure I don't need to make any purchases from them in the next month or so, but I did want uh, another one of their brush sets. So I talked about this brush set in my December haul and so many of you commented that you actually really like these brushes. So I was really excited because I was kind of like sleeping on this and I was like, do people know how good these brushes are for 10 bucks? Like you get a bunch of brushes and I've really been enjoying them. So the fact that so many of you commented and said you also really like these brushes made me want to get a spare set because if you know me, you know I hate cleaning my brushes and ten dollars like that's a sweet deal so i did pick up the pink set because i was curious i have the black set as well if you are just getting into makeup or you again hate cleaning makeup brushes like i do i would honestly recommend this i've had good luck with it and i can't believe the price point so as you can see like i'm about to quit my makeup reviews and start reviewing affordable brushes apparently the rate i'm going but i do have this set in the black and it's so nice, like you can travel with this. So I just love that Shop Missé does like really cool affordable products. I also picked up the AOA Studio Lash Pack. This is a six pack. So every once in a while my friend, specifically my friend Kelsey will have me do her makeup cause she does a lot of performing and special event type stuff. And so I figured I'd buy these for her and keep them on hand in case I needed to put false lashes on her. And then I hope I got this right because Amy will call me out in the comments if I bought the wrong one again. But I bought the AOA F19, which I believe she said is her favorite highlighter brush. Ugh, I feel like I bought the wrong one again. I don't know. It's really fluffy and it's very lightweight and soft. So I'm excited to try this out. And then last but not least, my friend Ellie, who I've talked about here on my channel. I think she has a YouTube channel, but she's very active on her Instagram. She has the funniest stories. She's just like very much a normal human being. And I love that. I don't like people that pretend to be something they're not on their Instagram and stuff like that. So um, she loves these Alita lashes from Shop Missé and AOA. They're so dramatic. Like I did not realize how big these were gonna be. Ellie, you must have really big eyes because I feel like these are gonna look like there's spiders hanging from my eyeballs. But um, I went all in cause she loves these. So I picked up five pairs and these are typically $1.50 and I think I got them on sale. So I'm very excited to try those out. And then my friend Emily Hanhan um, recommended that I try the AOA sponge cleaner um, because I was gonna repurchase the Veramona one. And so I picked this up. Actually, this might be an old purchase. Did I talk about this in my, did I talk about this in my December haul? If I did, I'm sorry. I guess it was just sitting here and I thought I just bought it. Okay guys, so again, I don't have rules about this product, so I feel like it was okay that I bought it. Plus, I have a singles declutter that I want to film. So I got two of these and I got two of the Colored Rain Giant palettes. Those were on sale, the Power Collection ones were on sale. So I bought two of those, so look forward to a new video. I want to reorganize my singles and basically use them more because I have a really beautiful singles collection. So I just wanna show you guys this palette. This, I was just showing you the box. This is what the actual palette looks like. A lot of YouTubers have received this in PR. I got some shadows for PR from Adept, but I haven't received any of their palettes. But this is nice, it is freaking heavy. Holy crap, I don't remember anyone mentioning how heavy it is. So basically I think you can store like 79 eyeshadows in this, like the small pans, the 26 millimeter, but I wanted to use this for now. This is what I have in here. 
Um, these are my JD Glow and Give Me Glow eyeshadows. I keep sticking my finger in here. Um, um, and I just love the size of this palette, so I bought it because this way it can hold all my big pan eyeshadows and oh my god this is so satisfying to look at. I kind of want to put the Juicy Olive in here as well just to keep all my Give Me Glow green shades together but isn't this beautiful? Oh my goodness and then one of you had asked me to redo a JD Glow swatch party video because I didn't buy all the shadows at the same time. I bought half at one time and then the other half at another time so I have two different swatch parties but now that I have a new camera, I, I feel like I should redo that swatch party video. Plus, I feel like JD Glow is really getting its moment as an indie brand. So I think you guys would appreciate a swatch party. But yeah, these are bomb. Like, I really like Adept. I mentioned them in brands I think you should try this year. And this palette is freaking solid. I would say it at least weighs like a good, maybe even four. I don't want to say it's five pounds. But it could be about five pounds. It's really heavy. So just want to mention that to you. Okay, so the last thing I did get in PR, this was the Miracle palette by Glamlight. This was in Angie's collab with Tri Beauty Box. And I will link the video. I did a look with this palette in case you guys are curious. I don't know if her box is still available. I know they're coming out with one in February and this video, you're probably watching it in February, so I'm gonna guess her collab box is no longer available. If you guys know if it is available, leave a comment down below so we can help each other out, but that was a really fun collab box, and I was so happy that I got to receive it in PR. Okay guys, so I did get one more thing in PR, I almost forgot. So, the brand Sand and Sky reached out to me. I don't know if I had heard about them before I got their email. Maybe Julia Mazzucato has talked about them. I'm not really sure, but they're an Australian brand, skincare brand, I believe. I tried the Australian Emu Apple Super Bounce mask that they sent me, and this was really nice. I also tried the Dreamy Glow Drops. I thought these were for your face, but... I think it's like a glowy formula for your body. Not 100% sure, probably should do more research on that. They also sent me the Australian Pink Clay Flash Perfection Exfoliating Treatment. Their packaging is so cute. And I also got the Australian Pink Clay Pore Fining Face Mask for detoxifying and brightening. So I'm so grateful to Sand and Sky for sending me some skincare because skincare is also on my no buy list for January and February. Apparently I was able to stay away from buying skincare this month, unlike the makeup, which again, I feel really bad that I went over my low buy, no buy rules, but I'm really hoping that you guys can see past this. Just give me like one little pass for February. Also, it's like, I don't want to lie to my subscribers and pretend that I didn't buy what I bought. Like, I'm not really ashamed. Like, I know I need to do better, but I mean, it's still kind of fun, right? I don't know. Oh my God. You guys are going to kill me. I just know it. Okay, so before I show you guys the four palettes I picked up for the month of January, I do want to show you guys some products I ordered over the holidays that came in. This palette was on back order, so... I had to wait until they were able to send me both. So this is a little guy. This is a macchiato palette from Midas Cosmetics. I just thought this was the cutest little thing. Um, when I saw these launched, I really wanted them, but I was trying not to be a savage, so I did wait, and I did pick it up during a good sale. So I have tried that one time, and I think it's really cute. And then I did buy this palette. This was bought on the recommendation of my friend, Teresa, she really likes this yellow palette. She said it was better than the Aha uh -huh Honey palette. So I'm very curious to try it. I have pretty low expectations because you guys know yellows on my skin tone, it's a tough combination. So we'll see how it goes. I do have a bit of exciting news though because 
you guys know I'm a very small channel so I don't get like these crazy big opportunities like bigger channels do and that's okay I know my little place in the world that's totally fine with me but the owner of Midas Cosmetics was so sweet she reached out and she offered me a discount code with Midas and my discount code with them is KH makeup. I'm trying to keep the same discount code through, you know, whatever discount codes I have. Oh, I also got a discount code with Sydney Grace. That one is non affiliate, so I don't make any money if you use that. You just get, I think, 15% off your purchase of Sydney Grace. But the Midas one is an affiliate code, so that's kind of cool. I've never had one of those before. I don't really know what to do with myself, don't feel any pressure to use it, but if you guys like my channel, if you like what I do, and you happen to be placing a Midas order, think of me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's kind of all I wanted to say about that, but I was not sent these products. I purchased these a long time ago before I even got an email or anything like that. And I have my eye on the Smoky Glow collab, but I did miss the pre-order and I kind of talked about this on my Instagram stories. I couldn't buy it anyway because I already bought the four palettes for the month. So I'm hoping I can grab it on the 28th. I'm not sure if I'm going to get it in PR because I think I might, but I'm not sure. So I might just go ahead and grab it. We'll see. I don't know, there's so much happening, but I'm so excited to be affiliated with a brand like Midas because they're also based in Chicago, which is the Midwest. And I was talking to the owner and I was like, that's really cool. I was like, cause as a small influencer based in North Dakota, I feel like all the opportunities are in the East Coast or the West Coast and the rest of us are like, just hanging out, especially small influencers and especially where I live. You know, even Minneapolis, I see a lot of YouTubers and beauty bloggers, especially the beauty blogger community in Minnesota, Minneapolis area. There are a lot of them and they get to go to like cool events with like Urban Decay and stuff like that. I live in a town where we have one Ulta and one Sephora and the Sephora is inside JCPenney. So it's pretty cool to see getting somewhere and the collab looks really cool. I talked about it more in my brands I want to try in 2020. So I did pick these two products out because I knew I was going to try this brand out this year. And so I'm even more excited now because yeah, they reached out. It was very cool. So yeah, no pressure. Just want to put it out there. I'll try and remember to add it to my description box. So if you're ever like placing an order and you're like, who, what, 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 what code is Karen's? It's usually KH makeup, so just so you guys know about that. Okay guys, drum roll please. I feel like I've been sitting here forever. So my four palettes for my allocation of the month. The first one, you guys have already seen a video. This is the Pat McGrath Mothership Sublime Golden Opulence Palette. This was her palette for the Lunar New Year and I've already filmed a look with this palette and I think this is a great everyday palette for you guys wanting to try Pat McGrath or you're, you know, trying not to buy a big palette. I think this one would be great for you guys. I do want to rank my palettes for each month. That's going to be one of my new ideas for my low buy. So once I get to testing everything, maybe sometime mid-February, I will rank my palettes that I purchased in January. I thought that would be kind of a fun video idea for you guys. So then number two, this one was definitely an impulse buy. <laughs> I bought the Tati Beauty palette. And the reason I bought this, I've already told her, I said it was Teresa. Cause Teresa is dead, hates this palette so much and is not afraid to tell you guys that I had to see which side of the fence I was going to be on. My friend Leticia, she is a YouTube OG. She loves her Tati Beauty palette. I think my friend Vanessa also didn't like this palette. I think she already sold hers. She's going to kill me when she sees this video because she's going to be like, really? You bought that piece of crap? <laughs> but I bought it. I want to try it. I'm going to film my first impressions of me trying this out. I should have filmed with this this weekend but my bitch ass was lazy so I'm filming on Sunday and I use my next palette so this one's gonna have to wait but 
I'm really excited. Okay, so palette number three, you guys would have known, is the Amrezi palette. I just thought this was the cutest thing ever. This baby pink glittery packaging is just so fun. And I don't know, it's just fun. And then the shades, a lot of people were like, eh, so boring, so ABH, been there, done that. Which I totally agree, these aren't revolutionary by any means. But it's such a fun, different kind of palette but i feel like this palette is a updated version a 2020 version of modern renaissance because let's be honest i never grab for my modern renaissance anymore it's just kind of there i don't want to get rid of it because i'm like attached to that palette because it's like one of those first palettes you know um so i won't get rid of it but i never use it so it's nice that they did an updated version i think that as people that have been in the YouTube beauty community for a while, sometimes we forget that there's new people discovering makeup every day and this is gonna be their modern renaissance. I truly believe that and you're not going into Ulta anymore looking for, oh, that older palette, you know, everyone's looking for the new new. So I feel like this palette is gonna hit that market perfectly for 2020. Um, last purchase of this month is from the Makeup Geek rebrand. This again was a very spontaneous purchase. I saw this color combo and I was really excited. So I wasn't really sure what to expect with the rebrand because I thought all she was gonna do is the big matrix palettes. I, I don't know why I didn't think that she would have curated little bundles. So this palette was $32 and it came all packaged individually. And then the magnetic palette. I really don't like the gaps in this palette. I did not notice that in the marketing images that there is a gap in this whole thing. And I have a sneaky feeling these are left over because the new packaging or like my quad and the matrix packaging has a clear top. So I... That's my conspiracy. I obviously don't have any proof, but what the heck, Marlena? Like, that's annoying. So anyway, I fell in love with this color story, and I haven't used this yet. This literally came in the mail yesterday, so I have to play with that. And technically, that was four, and then I saw this little quad, and that green shade was just like, come here, Karen. So I was like, yes, I am coming with you. And I didn't realize this was one of their powder pigments. I forgot that that was even a collection that they did, so I could have just bought the green shade, but I couldn't find it under their mattes, so I'm guessing it's somewhere on their website under like the powder pigments, so I missed out on that, but I did end up spending 14 bucks on this little guy, but I think it's kind of cute, and the crazy thing is, I kind of felt like you could, you know, like clearly these are my vibes right now, so it was really funny. So those are my four eyeshadow palette purchases of January 2020. I know, I know, I screwed up, bad Karen. Bad job at sticking to my rules, but it taught me things and it's only gonna make me a better person um, in February. So hopefully I'll have less stuff in February. And I know, I think, I'm pretty sure, I'm planning on buying the Love palette by Natasha Denona. That one looks gorgeous. Hoping I'll get Smoky Glow's palette in PR, but if not, I'm gonna try and pick that up. So those are the two palettes I'm pretty sure I'm getting in February. Other than that, nothing is really calling to me. Yeah, that's about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments and I will see you in my next one soon. Bye guys.